This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at rotating objects in 3ds Max. Like all the transform commands in Max, there's a handful of different ways to get yourself in rotate mode. Through the interface, using a keyboard shortcut, and by simply right-clicking with your mouse. We'll be experimenting with all the various options. This is a file named Rotating Objects. It can be found in the Working Files folder. The Rotate icon can be found on the left-hand side of the toolbar. Let's go ahead and activate that. Now, right away, I want you to notice that you currently don't see the transformation gizmo. Remember, an object has to be selected before the gizmo is going to display in the viewports. So right now, Max has absolutely no idea of what object in your scene you want to work on. Simply selecting the object will bring up our three colored icon. Those gizmo rings can be resized by simply using the plus and minus signs on your keyboard. OK, let's grab each ring at a time and see how that rotates the object. Now when performing my rotation, I'm going to leave my left mouse down, then to cancel out before committing, I'll simply right click. Let's try first the green ring. Then we'll go for blue. And finally, we'll finish up by rotating the red. As expected, each of the rings will rotate the object in a completely different direction. Now, when you rotate, be aware that there's two different areas that you can look in order to find just how far you're going around. Above the gizmo, you'll see a series of numbers. The number changing indicates the direction in which you're spinning. You can also look below the timeline. Notice the spinners for X, Y, and Z. Again, the number changing is indicative of the ring that you're dragging. Now you can certainly rotate an object in any of your views. Just know that reading the gizmo and specifically interpreting the colors of the rings is going to be important. Let's convert to four views with the Alt-W shortcut. If when working in the front view, then you want to spin your object in a counterclockwise or clockwise direction, that would be the blue ring. Try that. Again, I'll right-click to cancel out before committing. If working in the top view, then you'd like to stand your object straight up and down. Well, in that case, you'd use the green ring. Try that. And over in the left, again, standing the object straight up and down. Well, this time around, you'd grab the red ring. Now, you can always rotate two ways at a time by not grabbing a specific ring, but by simply sticking your mouse in the middle of the gizmo. Be careful in doing this, though, as it's not going to give you quite as much precision as if going one way at a time. Now, my suggestion would be if you do need to rotate in two different directions, you're probably going to find it better off to rotate in one direction first, then the other. Let's take a look at a file where we might need to use a little more precision when rotating. This is a file named Chair Rotate, which can be found in the Working Files folder. Let's go ahead and select our chair, then this time activate the Rotate command using the keyboard shortcut. That's the letter E. In our example, we're going to play things out as if the chair has been blown onto its side due to a strong wind. Now, the first thing we ought to consider is which viewport we ought to be using when performing our rotation. In actuality, any of the views for this example would work. We're just going to have to be a little careful, like in the previous file, on which ring of the gizmo that we end up grabbing. Why don't we try it in each of our views? In the perspective view, let's lock down onto the green ring, then rotate. Now as you do so, I want you to notice how uneven the number of degrees that you're rotating is. You can see those values not just above the gizmo, but also below the timeline. I'm going to go ahead and right-click to cancel. Along with being able to grab the actual ring on the gizmo, I could have also simply changed the spinners down below the timeline. Now think about this, the green ring again translates to the Y direction. So down below the timeline, go ahead and change the Y value. One thing I'd like to correct is the actual number of degrees that the chair is rotating. The ground sits at an even 90 degrees angle to the chair. In order to be able to rotate a little more accurately, let's activate the angle snap up on the toolbar. You could also instead choose to use the shortcut, the letter A. Notice that now when rotating, we're snapping around in 5 degree increments. And this makes it much easier for me to be able to rotate the chair down in a precise way. 
Now when rotating, you'll notice that the angle snap has been programmed to rotate in 5 degree increments. You can change that value at any time by simply right clicking on the angle snap icon on the toolbar. In the general section under angle, let's change the number of degrees to 15. Closing that up and rotating again, you'll see now snaps to a different increment. Now both 5 and 15 go into 90, so either of those numbers would work for this example. Let's reactivate our SELECT command by typing the Q shortcut. This time around, let's experiment with rotating our chair in the front view. To activate the rotate this time, we'll simply right click with our mouse and in the lower left hand square, choose Rotate. To get the chair to rotate on its side, we're going to need to grab the blue ring. Let's activate the top view and try the same thing from there. This time around, we're going to need the green ring. And for one more try on this thing, let's activate the left view, this time grabbing onto the red ring. One last thing I'd like you to notice is exactly where on the chair the rotation is happening from. It's from the location of the gizmo, which is located at the bottom of the chair. When an object rotates, it actually does so from what is referred to as its pivot point. Every object will have a pivot point, and it's important for you to know that that pivot location can be changed, which we'll be looking into how to do in an upcoming video, so be on the lookout for that. Okay, that'll give you a little introduction into using the rotate command. We've got the methods of activating the command, the benefits of using angle snap, and hopefully a better understanding of how important it is to choose which viewport to use when getting down to business.